Hello and welcome to the Roundtable Podcast. I am Shogun. Uh, thank you for the live audience and participants joining with me today. Actually, no audience today. We're all participants. This is going to be a Roundtable format, Roundtable Podcast. That means that we are going to discuss the topic and pass the microphone all the way around our big, lovely Roundtable. Everybody's going to get their turn on the mic, but there's no two-minute limit here. So before we get started on this coronavirus, COVID-19, Roundtable Live Global Pandemic Coverage. Uh, to join the Roundtable Discord server where the party happens. Just go Roundtable Discord. We'll go to the conspiracy theory or politics sections of Discord. Uh, please do follow us on all social media. We are on every social media. So Facebook, Instagram, Reddit, you name it. Check out our YouTube channel with 60 plus amazing podcasts. Um, also, the roundtablediscord.com is our website. And look for us on Podcast Addict and Podbean very soon. Okay. So, as you guys have heard, coronavirus is a global pandemic. It's on every continent and very near every country on Earth, except Antarctica so far. Uh, it will kill millions of people, perhaps hundreds of millions of people. Some people say the mortality rate may be as high as 10%. Some people say as high as 18%. I've heard 12%. The point is, uh, if you're an older person, it's very, very deadly. And even if you're young, it is uh, not a walk in the park. And as you know, this is causing massive social and economic issues. Stock market collapses. In Canada, two-thirds of people are already unemployed because of this. Two-thirds. In America, estimates are very soon 40 to 50% unemployment. So big deal is a big understatement. This thing has essentially brought civilization to its knees. And it is evolving day by day. And we're really just in the beginning of it. And it's going to get a lot worse before it gets any better. I've heard estimates of minimum 18 months before any kind of normality is returned. So what we're going to do today, as we've done in the past, is we're going to go around the room, right, from top to bottom as I see it, meaning we're starting with Anna. And um, I guess it goes alphabetically. Uh, so first, I'm going to ask you to say... You can say your name, say what country you're in and what part of the country you're in, if you're comfortable sharing that. Then tell us a little bit about like how it's affecting where you are. Like, What are you seeing? What's happening? Are the stores closed? Are people wearing masks? Are people freaking out? Uh, is there quarantine? Just tell us about the situation where you are. That way, us and the listeners, we're going to get like snapshots from all over the world because we have members from every country on earth pretty much. We're from all over the world, so we're going to get like live, we're all going to be like live on the ground reporters, basically. Then after that, feel free to talk about your thoughts about this, your speculations, your theories, anything whatsoever, how you're preparing, whatever you want. But do try and give us a few minutes on what's going on in your backyard and how you're feeling about it. So that being said, we're going to start with Anna. Hello, Anna, my dear friend. How are you doing and how is coronavirus treating you? Where are you and what's it like right now? So um, I'm Anna. I'm from America. I'm from Illinois. Um, it's been quite rough here, actually. You, we're, we're a ghost town, even Chicago, our major city. You'll be lucky to see 10 cars on the street. And that's completely like um, out of the normal, should I say. We're kind of under lockdown and we're at about one third unemployment rate where I am. Um, it's uh our cases have skyrocketed over 2000. I think we're at like 2500 around now. Um and it seems to be getting not just old but a lot of younger people as well. Um we recently had a little boy that was dying. They couldn't regulate his temperature. They couldn't get him to cool uh cool down and he just recently passed away. Um I know of three people I personally know that have this illness now and uh it's it's been kind of a shit storm honestly but the way my family has been uh preparing is we bought half cows like you can get from the butcher so we don't have to worry about getting like prepackaged stuff and then we just put them in the, the walk-in freezer along with our you know, other stuff. That seems to be the way to go. But um, that's essentially the update from around where I am. 
Thank you. And do you have anything else you want to share? Again, we want that information from everybody, but after that, feel free to say anything you want, you know, theories, analysis, uh, or when you're ready, just, you can just pass. Um, but I just give you one more chance to anything else you want to add. So um, I've actually been watching the virus quite closely and I see the main three things that go wrong almost right away is extreme heart palpitations, um, the body not being able to control its temperature and breathing. Those are the top three. So those, those, are, those are also the only three things your spinal cord um, controls. I don't know if this could be something that actually attacks the spinal cord and goes from there um, and attacks the nervous system. But those are the top three things you always see with it. And it just lines up almost perfectly. But I don't know. So I'll pass after that. But that was my observation. Thank you, Anna. So again, we're going top to bottom as I see it is alphabetical. So next up, uh, my man Belushi, what you got for us? You there, Belushi? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. I've been in my humble abode for about almost a month straight now. I hit up the food store and I didn't do no crazy raiding and take more than I did. All I bought was five boxes of Top of Ramen and um, three 50-pound bags of rice and um, a couple other things. And I'm calorie restricting and I have enough food to last a while. Right? Ryman is the very top left state of the United States is Washington. I live very, very close to metropolitan area. And there is 3,000 confirmed cases and 147 deaths. And I feel like where I live is one of those places where people aren't taking it. People are taking it seriously. They're going to emotionally invoke words, but they're not actually taking it seriously. Sure, bars are... Um, take out only and stuff like that, but that doesn't really matter because people still touch surfaces, and that's that's the main reason people contract this is touching surfaces and being near someone. You know that's what the social distance distancing is for. So it's for anyone that hears this. It's you know if you're wearing a mask and stuff, great, that's great, you know, perfect. But the thing is, you need to make sure that when you take your mask off and all that, that anything contaminated, you don't touch it. Because you touch it, the mask essentially worse is worthless because you're probably going to touch your face. And there you go, you're you've caught it. So always remember, take when you take stuff off, to make sure you don't touch any orifices and get it into your body. Um, the street right in front of my house, there's no one. I could easily throw a rock out my window and hit a car every like two seconds. Right now. I freaking couldn't probably do it all day. Um, it's it's ridiculous. Um, right now, the reached half a million people in the world, and it's only going up. So I hope for the best, and uh, it's it's horrible. I'm go on to the next person. Thank you, Belushi. So next up is going to be Big F Monster. Welcome to the server. And uh, do you have anything for us about coronavirus in your neighborhood yes. and your takes on it? Welcome. Uh, my name is Christian. Uh, I live in the United States, Maryland. Uh, the main thing that's affected me is uh, actually before this started, I was unemployed and uh, recently actually did get a government job. However, it's the case of I got hired two days before they shut it down. As in, like, I got hired, went in, signed the paperwork. Oh, you're not going to come in until April. And the truth is, I I don't even know if I'm only I'm even going to go in at the beginning of next month, next week. So I'm in this kind of middle like purgatory state of I don't like a lot of people don't know about the employment. I also don't know about mine at all due to this. Um, the other way it's affected me actually a lot is I am a music buff. I go to concerts every single week and every single concert for at least two months have been confirmed canceled. And uh, beyond that, a lot of events I know are still in this kind of 
state of are we even going to be allowed to do this? And a lot of people are worrying about because a lot of bands and stuff, it takes months in advance to book these things. And everyone's worried about even trying to put a uh, booking together for even in the fall, because they don't know if they're even going to be allowed and have to cancel again. Cause like everything is postponed, everything is gone and they want to keep on doing something. A lot of people, uh, are trying to do online concerts and things, but they're just like <clears throat> being part of the event industry and just like everything's canceled. I have plenty of music friends are like, there's my money. It's gone. And um, so th- I'm at that aspect. A lot of people talk about bars and venues, but I'm the aspect of like, Hey, this is yet again work, but it's also so inconsistent work as well. And not being able to have that is it kind of shows that and the fact it's not considering a job it's it's hard to say you were employed in the first place um and and that really affects people was there anything else you wanted to add um big f before you uh pass the mic i think the more interesting is actually my mother which um she was a doomsday prepper and i'm just kind of i just kind of kind of sad that um, when she's right, or it, it's it, she, he's feeling right of like, look at my plethora of things, and I'm now ready for a stockpile, even though she has like a year supply worth of stuff. And it, and the truth is, I don't need any of it. I, I've been able to, I, I go to the store once a week, and I'm fine. And even though my grocery store seemed to be raided, however, I, everything that has been rated I don't need or I'm already have. So like I'm set. It's, it's a lot of uh, people kind of just went overdid it uh, with things and, and I'm fine. Okay. Thank you, big F. And again, welcome to the server. Hope uh, to see you around more in the future. Uh, Captain Sumting Wong, my man, Aviator, uh, let us know how is coronavirus affecting you? Uh, where are you? What's things like in your neighborhood? And what are your thoughts on the virus, uh, Aviator? Uh, so it, doesn't, it hasn't really had much of a significant impact by any means. Uh, the city, our city is currently on a 30-day uh, lockdown. No, no activities unless it's absolutely essential yet. We just went on a walk. Uh, not but an hour ago, in every direction you look, there were couples, there were families out walking, and I, there were. It, it's incredible, like how many people are actually out and about, just you know, actually physically doing something versus, you know, just the, the standard life. But um, uh, other than that, yeah, the grocery stores are um, consistently uh, empty, uh, with you know, but the essentials are bread, milk, and all that stuff. So it's seeing all that stuff. Uh, it's different, and then um, as far as anything else goes, it really hasn't been affecting us. But uh, uh, Chris, is there, what do you know about the uh, person who was exposed at your sister's work? Um, yeah, they had to shut down. So my sister works in animal health, uh, making vaccines, and they actually had to shut down part of production because somebody had symptoms, and so that actually is kind of affecting um, that industry um but no other than that i don't know everything so we got people coughing in the vaccines what huh what'd you say i said so we have people coughing in the vaccines i mean animal animal health so yeah i think it was in the in the labs where they're actually making the things which is why they had to shut it down and the batches that um, were being worked on at that time are obviously not able to go out and they'll have to go back into like testing and stuff. That's an interesting point. Uh, What happens when the people working on vaccines get sick, you know, and then that shuts down even the response, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. Sorry, it's your turn. Aviator. Yeah, there's certain things I definitely know. You know, like the past couple of days, I've, I've tried to go to Micro Center, for example, and you, you Micro Center of all things, you would think, oh, yeah, it absolutely shut down. But no, Micro Center being a huge store, you know, only selling computer parts uh, and all that type of stuff. There, Every time I've went, there's been a massive line 
uh, because it's, uh, I assume there are more than just one person in at a time, but uh, every time there's one person in, one person out. So I don't know how many are in at a time, but yeah, they're, they're considered an, a necessity because everybody's having to work from, uh, work from home. Um, and I've also noticed a major impact on uh, cellular, uh, like uh, data, internet. It's significantly hit us here. Like if you're not located like right by one of the cellular towers, then your uh, then your data is going to be hit hard. Like it's it's like during the day it is stupidly slow uh, versus what the uh, what the normal is. But uh, yeah, other than that, um, you know it's uh, you know people are accommodating to it here. The stores are doing things like you know the the old people get to go grocery shopping for an hour before other people are allowed in just so. You know, they don't get trampled on, but other than that, yeah, we're, we're pushing along fine. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Aviator. Uh, next up is uh, Severe OCD. Uh, would you like to weigh in on how coronavirus is affecting you, sir? Uh, sure. So, hello. My name is Xiao Yang, and I'm from Belgium, Western Europe. So uh, before I get into the situation, I just want to apologize because I have nasal voice and this isn't my first language. Um, furthermore, I'm suffering from insomnia as well. So uh, basically, like the streets are des uh, deserted. Um, well, I, I suffer from severe contamination OCD, and this has like honestly made my life hell. And uh, this is a relatively common sentiment these days, at least for like the segment of the OCD community I hang out with, uh, and I've. I have online school for the next few months. Uh, in terms of positive effects, uh, there used to be like this big African homeless man that like roamed around uh, the gym which I frequent, and he's harassed me in the past, and I haven't seen him like the last few days, so he's probably dead. And uh, that's pretty much it. So uh, on to the next person. All right, thank you. And uh, yeah, not a, not a good time to have a, a germ phobia. I didn't even think about that angle before. Thanks for bringing that up. It's uh, I hope you're doing all right and you know, hang in there. Constantine, my man, uh, you got anything for us? Where are you at? How's it uh, shaking out where you are? So my current location right now is in, I, I moved um, just two days ago to Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I'm with my parents and my brother. He came back from medical school as well. Um, so I've been living in Jersey for the past one and a half year, um, years, and the scene there was pretty grim. Um, New York, I'm sure you guys have heard, it's pretty much like ground zero for these um, for the COVID uh, nineteen cases, and um, all the surrounding. I live in I lived in Central Jersey, so all the northern counties were getting more and more infected case wise. Uh, we had yesterday. Um, last week it was like 3,000 cases, now it's 6,000 cases, so it doubled in just a week. Um, it was looking pretty grim, uh, stores were being cleaned out, I, honestly a lot of people are walking around scared, mm, I've seen less and less people on the streets. I knew that um, if I stayed there, you know, I was, I was most likely going to get infected, so... I got out of there as soon as I heard that they banned travel from New York City, like flights going in and out of New York. I knew that Jersey was going to be next, so I got out of there pretty much the next day. They announced the New York shutdown. Um, in Atlanta, it's pretty... Uh, it, it looks relatively relaxed. Like, um, I live in the Atlanta suburbs, and the city here, it's, it's known for, like, its tech hub. Okay. So... Yeah, Atlanta? Hey. See? Mm, sorry. Uh, hey, Redden, I'm going to... Yeah, you're muted, but just close your mic. You'll be unmuted when it's your turn. Go ahead. Uh, sorry, uh, Constantine. Oh, no, sorry. Um, so, yeah, over here, it's it's pretty relaxed. Um, you know, I've been working remotely. Um, I've been actually even taking interviews on the side, so I'm not sure if the tech industry is kind of, like, different from, like, the employment perspective, like, compared to, like, retail. But, uh, you know, like... Uh, was it like um, Aviator said? Like, not much has changed from like work perspective. Um, uh, you know, it, it feels relatively normal in here in Atlanta, but uh, Jersey, on the other hand, I mean, it looks it looks like that uh, beginnings of the end times. I don't know. So yeah, I mean, hopefully this passes over. Um, my theory behind this, my theory behind this uh, virus is that I feel like this is like a 
test run or a simulation run before they release um, something that doesn't have much of a high mortality rate. Um, so that's, you know, that's my opinion at least. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Constantine. I, that's a good opinion, I, and uh, I know what you meant, but I think you meant something that has a higher mortality rate or something that doesn't have a high recovery rate. I'm, I'm pretty sure yeah. is, is what you were saying. Something more da- more dangerous in the future, and I agree. This this could either be intentionally released as a test run uh, to sort of inoculate the system and figure out how to respond to such things, or they are taking advantage of it for that purpose, um, and that could actually be a silver lining. But in the sense that this could be like a social vaccination where we learn how to deal with coronavirus, which isn't that deadly, might really save our ass when, you know, Ebola times two comes along or whatever, right? We'll actually have tested out the procedures. might actually save our butts. But again, I don't want to steal my turn ahead of the mic here. So Dorgan is fly. Uh, Hello, sir. And do you have anything for us? Hello, yes. Um, I haven't been studying a lot about the COVID. I can definitely vouch, though. Uh, <clears throat> it's affected my life already. I actually got laid off from work about a week ago. Due to and this, so what uh, country and what part of the country are you in, sir? Well, yeah, I'm in Alberta, Canada, kind of an undisclosed city. But um, Yeah, thanks to the oil crash and the COVID virus, I, I got, got laid off. Um, as far as I can see, especially in my city... And it, it's a relatively large city. There's over 60,000 people. Um, but essentially, there's been a, a lack of care, I guess. Like, like people really don't care in the city I'm in, which is kind of disturbing to me. Like, I went to a Walmart to get cat food and cat litter the other day, and the parking lot was absolutely full. All of the employees in Walmart weren't wearing masks or handing out hand sanitizer unless it was at the door at, at minimum when you exited the store, not when you entered. So I think it's it's really important that, that people, especially in Canada, like don't don't underestimate this. Uh, there is definitely over four thousand cases confirmed in Canada. Uh, you know, even though even though there's only forty deaths or so, like this this is a serious thing. It's a pandemic for a reason. But uh yeah, it's it's definitely affecting my life. Uh, not only not only in the, in the financial world, but mentally. Like you know, I was the only guy in Walmart that day walking around with a mask on. Uh, the only one with a, a little bottle of hand sanitizer in my pocket, ready to you know to sanitize my hands when I left the store, essentially. But this virus is definitely uh, it's it's something else. And I would agree with uh, I would agree with you, Shogun, when you when you said this could be potentially. Uh, test grounds for how we handle pandemics, but at the same time, I'm not willing to roll the dice and taste the, take the risk. I guess you could say as to not being precautious, especially you know I've got a very young child and a wife, and uh, the last thing I need right now with no job is for them to get sick and then you know have that. But nonetheless, I know this is a mutating virus, so uh, it, it can't it can't be it can't be taken lightly. So I guess I guess that's all I have to say about that. Thank you very much, Dorgan. And I want to uh, clarify, when I said it could be a test run, I didn't mean to imply that it's fake or that it's not dangerous or that it's not the real deal itself. I only meant that, obviously, what we have in coronavirus or COVID, although it's serious, it could be exponentially worse, right? If you read the book Oryx and Crake it, uh, by Margaret Atwood, it describes a pandemic scenario like this. But instead, it's like people basically, their bodies, you know, melt down. They kind of turn into like puddles of goo in front of your eyes. They bleed out their eyes and like their cells degenerate into mush. And in, you know, 15 minutes, you melt into a puddle. That's possible, right? That could happen at any time. So so as bad as coronavirus, it is a long shot from a worst case scenario. And if we survive this, and that is an if. This thing really could be the end for us. I don't think it will be, but it's not outside of the realm of possibility. I'm just saying, if we survive it, we will have learned a lot that hopefully will save our ass next time. But again, I'm not trying to steal my turn ahead of the mic. So no, thank would, you very yeah, much, Dorgan. I would totally agree. Absolutely. I think Edward said he's got to answer the doorbell. So if you want to skip to God tonight and then maybe go back to Edward. But yeah, I totally okay, agree. We're, we're, sure. we're going to come back to Edward. Thank you, Dorgan is fly. God of night. Welcome, my friend. We are doing the coronavirus roundtable. It is now your turn at the roundtable. We would like you to just tell us what country you're in, what part of the country. If you can tell us that, then tell us what things are like for you. And then after that, 
what your thoughts are overall on the virus. Do you want your turn, God of Night? Okay, no. God of Night, so we're going to skip to Gold Moon, and maybe we'll get to him later. Maybe he's just taking a piss. Gold Moon, how are you? Hello. Hi, Gold Moon. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> good. Uh, could you tell us what part of the country you're in, what country you're in, and how Corona is affecting your community? Yeah. Um, I'm in the United States. I am in Pennsylvania. Um, and in the city I'm in, I'm actually about, uh, about an hour from Philadelphia, which is probably the hardest hit in our state. Um, around here, it, it's really been business like normal, which is kind of, um, unsettling, um, because I feel like I mean, I myself initially didn't take it seriously, but I've, you know, over the last week or so have been uh, changing my view. But people are still, you know, the schools are shut down. My kids are being, you know, basically are home. Uh, two of them are being homeschooled um, because their school is doing their online stuff. The other, they're not doing anything. So everything's up in the air. I have two adult children. Both of them have lost their jobs or not lost, but are currently unemployed. Hopefully when it, things ever get back to normal, we'll be back to work. But um, like, I forget who it was who said about the Walmart. Um, yeah, when I went to the store, I was shocked that they weren't doing anything um, as far as for protection. There's nobody wearing masks, nobody wearing gloves. Uh, when I went to Costco, everybody had gloves on. Um, they were handing out hand sanitizer and they were limiting how many people could be at the store at once and things like that, which I thought was very good. But, um, yeah, there's, it doesn't seem to, I don't think has sunk in. Plus we don't have where I'm at. I mean, we only have like, I think we've had like 16 cases in our County. That's it. So it doesn't feel like it doesn't, um, it just doesn't, it, you don't get the full sense of what everybody else is going through because it doesn't seem to be a real big thing right here. But I feel like, eh, you know, it, it, listening to all of you, it, it makes me a little bit nervous. Um, but we stay home, you know, and, and in some ways I think it's been kind of a good thing because I think families are, are not a good thing. But I mean, a lot of families are, you know, kind of being forced to spend time together, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Uh, I see a lot of people outside walking around, going for walks. They stay together in their little families. But, you know, I, I think that's good, too. People are getting outdoors and, and, and doing different things. But, yeah, I don't know. It's, yeah, these are uncharted times, I guess. Thank you, Goldman. We appreciate that very much. Uh, I want to take a step backwards to my good friend. Oh, did he step out? No, there he is. Hello, Franklin. Uh, you ended up on the... Wait, no, 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 no. No, you're coming up. My mistake. Hey, Raiden. You stepped in just in time. Welcome to the server. Welcome to the room. Uh, we are doing the roundtable on COVID-19. It is now your turn. Would you like to tell us how coronavirus is affecting you, uh, also what country and where in that country you live, and then finally your thoughts on it. So tell us what it's like where you are and then what you think about it. Are we in me? Is that what's going on? That is, you stepped in literally right in time to take the mic that was being handed to someone <laughs> else. You, you literally just well, intercepted well, the I, microphone I mean, pass. I, 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 I was technically sitting here for an hour or so. I apologize. For some reason, I thought you just entered the room. Either way, it's your no, turn. I, and, I, uh, I didn't mean to imply it either wasn't. Way, either way, thank you. Um, I live in... Are you correcting California. my Canadian grammar, sir? How dare you? What are you talking about? Either way. What are you either talking about? Either way. <laughs> Maybe. I'm not your buddy guy. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <clears throat> hey, Raiden, your turn. Go ahead. So, yes, I, I do um, live in California. Um, of course, all the theaters and everything's closed. Uh, the liquor store is open, though. It's an essential uh, business. Uh, also, the weed store is open, which is also deemed an essential business. So, uh, life's not too bad. Um, also, 
grocery stores close a little early. That kind of sucks. Um, I work in the healthcare industry and it, I can work still. So that doesn't suck. Um, but it is a little weird having to stand in line to go to the weed store where you have to wait until other people come out and then you can go in. I mean, that kind of sucks. That's about all I got. Is, is that what you All right. Hey, Ren, thanks for that. Uh, next up hey. the list, I believe it's Hello Franklin. Next down the list, just alphabetical. Hello. Uh, hello, guys. How's it going? And um, yeah, basically, what happens here, um, I'm living in Argentina and Buenos Aires, more specifically. And um, life here is um, we are completely on a lockdown, basically. Um, so people cannot go outside their homes. Uh, unless you have uh, a job that implicates implicates that you um, need to, for example, if you work for uh, an hospital or if you work for like a market, uh, I mean, it's the only way you can go outside. And um, basically, we are, um, I mean, we, are, um, we cannot leave our homes, you know. And the thing is like, People were not conscious at first, but right now uh, people are like really aware about the situation, and um, we are now on a, in a moment where people are like uh, trying to educate ourselves. Because at first, all the people said that it, it's a sickness uh, that only affects like the elderly people, but it was uh, there was a lot of misinformation. But the government took uh, measurements to um, try to avoid the spread of the um, and right now we are like trying to control it, control this, and um, I, there's only like uh, three hundred less than three hundred cases, and I think we are doing it great right now. But you know the people who are suffering suffering most is like the people who live day by day the people who can't uh, go to work because uh, of the lockdown but uh, the government is going to take measurements about that and it's going to give them uh, money to to allow them to buy food and that's uh, the the situation here thanks for for the chance to speak <clears throat> thank you hello franklin also again as i said so good to see you again my Argentinian friend, and good to get an Argentinian perspective. Edward, have you returned from your uh, sojourn? Are you there? Are you at the mic? We need your perspective, bro. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, tell us where you live exactly, home address, everything, and then uh, so, tell us yeah, what coronavirus is like. Yeah, absolutely. Post your social, your social exactly. insurance in general chat, please. I don't have that. I live in a house on a street somewhere at some place. Which means you and, should have um, social security. Yesterday I went to work, that. and we needed some contractor bags, so we. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm one. sorry, sorry, but please, please do tell us country and part of country as okay. in as much detail as you can. I live in the United States, and um, okay. we uh, we needed some contractor bags, so we had to go to Walmart, and I'd realize, okay, this is the type the time where I'm going to see whatever people were talking about, like on social media, for for real. So. We're walking and we go to, we get to the aisle and the toilet, t I've never seen this in my entire life. Just an entire Walmart shelf, just from start to finish empty. Like, and then we went and looked for the, the bags and there were no bags. I'm just wondering, like, are people just panicking and just buying whatever they can? Because I can't think of any logical reason to have that many trash bags for a pandemic. It's like what people do here, they kind of. It's a it's a pretty popular town, so it's kind of social media driven. So whatever is posted on social media, it's 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 like somebody's gonna follow that, like with by like like it's law. So it's like exceeded panic to where it's like nobody really cares what's logical. They'll just do whatever they feel like, I guess. And it's like uh, the rest of my family is like well prepared. They're just you know stocked up. They know what to do. They've lived in um 
Jamaica and, you know, like back in the bush, they know how to handle these types of things or to, to just seclude themselves. But seeing everybody else, it's kind of just, it's almost sad because it's like they're kind of scrambling. They don't know what to do. I guess that's as much as I have to say about it, really. Okay. So I do want to ask you a question. You only said you lived in the United States and you don't have to reveal any more than you want, but there's many people in the server and in the chat who are in the United States, but you described a high degree of fear and panic where you are, whereas other people are not seeing that. So can you please tell us a little more about where in the United States you are so that we can have more of a sense of where this degree of, of concern is, is affecting? Um, yeah, that's. I really didn't want to really reveal. By a uh, by reason, it's just me. Just, that's I'm completely fine. That. This is a conspiracy theory server, and degrees of paranoia and caution vary from low to extremely high. So we're not here to force you to reveal more than you wish. I just because this is yeah. sort of provide because the idea of the, this event in particular, which by the way is a recurrent event, and if you missed the previous ones, we've done this Corvid roundtable before. So check it out on RT Recorded on our YouTube channel and check out, we've done about six coronavirus events already on the podcast. And we're going to continue to do them because it's an evolving scenario. So again, I'm not mining your data or anything sinister no, like that. Yeah. It's just yeah. we're trying to create a social map of how coronavirus is affecting the world. And since you're describing a very high degree of fear and panic, I was simply curious about what part of the country is being gripped Can by that. Can we at as, least get by region? It's okay. He doesn't want to reveal any more. We're not going to press him for more information. That's, yeah, that's I, not I what we're doing. I understand you want to understand like, where it is and <clears> everything. It's just, it's like... Yeah, and I understand your hesitance. I just, uh, that's completely fine. It's 100% optional what people want to share. So thank you for that, my man. Uh, that was Mr. Edward, God of Night. Have you returned from your dark uh, shepherdings? Are you there, God of Night? Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm here. Oh, shit, that's you. You change your name every goddamn ten minutes. All right. Hello, <laughs> God of Night. Hey, how's it going? Would you like to weigh in? Tell us where you are, what country, what part, how has corona yeah. affected your community, and what do you think about the virus overall? Um, I'm in central California. And um, here, uh, there aren't actually that many people out on the street, which is good. They're definitely keep preventing the virus from spreading over here. Everybody seems pretty calm where I am. Um, I've been walking outside every day since, like, the coronavirus was announced. But, like, recently, it's, like, pretty nice, I'll admit to walk outside because like there's no one out so it's like the it's kind of like the safest place to be where i am <laughs> but like i don't really have much else to say besides my own conspiracies about like the, the virus well what else would we be asking for other than that that's literally exactly what we oh. want all right well i mean um uh i may be wrong i'll just put it like that but but um I I'm like a little um I'm just looking into um kind of like the Bill Gates thing and if anybody's familiar with this like theory but like um him working on disease prevention like quitting windows to like work on disease prevention no I don't have any specific reason to believe that 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 he would be involved in anything negative but his father also worked in it and um they're working on vaccines but just to make a, a quick little point um bill gates is quoted from like i think 2010 or 9 saying that if they work really hard on vaccines they can lower the population by 10 percent. and <laughs> i think we could have like somebody else weigh in on this because my information is is not as deep as as one would hope, but it, it's it's just scratching the surface of this. Potential yeah, I've idea. actually heard of anything of what you were talking Lars, about. Lars, Lars, this is that. not a this is not an open discussion event. It's a round table, so we're going to go through the room one at a time. There's no open discussion here, so continue. Uh, um, God of night, please. J just to finish, um, my point, like. There, there's theories of it being man-made. There's theories of of China, maybe, maybe 
you know, some somebody in China maybe even creating it or a group in China, you know. Um, I'm just I'm just wondering if there's any other people involved in creation of it personally. Can I ask a question? Sure. Um, to God of Night, uh, when you said about Bill Gates that by creating vaccines we would lower the population, I don't I don't quite understand how that would work. Yeah, it, 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 I don't understand it either. You have to kind of ask him or, or get into his information and look at what he's said. But he, he, there is quotes and statements he's made talking about reducing the population. And he, I don't think he ever really fills, it, fills in like the blank part. We're like, well, what do you mean? Like, I don't think he ever really answers what he means, but he has said it. We we really need to do a podcast on Bill Gates. That that's a deep dark web right there. It's a good idea, Polly. Uh, maybe throw out in suggestions so we don't forget. And same with the free will suggestion we got earlier, uh, and also the hell and Jesus salvation podcast that we were talking about earlier. All those need to be done. But right now uh, we're on God and Night. Was there anything else you wanted to say about uh, I'd this? I'd like to pass pass the mic. Okay, well, thank you. So now, Lars, it is your turn. Feel free to take all the time you want on the mic and let us know, first of all, what country do you live in? What part of I that country do you live in? North and America, the United States. Uh, I live in Macon, Georgia. That's central Georgia. Um, and that being said, um, we are about, give or take, hour and a half to two hours from Atlanta, depending on traffic, right? Um, since the coronavirus touched base in Atlanta, it actually really hasn't went anywhere like I really honestly thought it would because if you've ever been to Atlanta, you ever seen Atlanta, think about a huge section block of Manhattan, right? And just think about condensing all that down into like the smallest space possible and add a whole bunch of spaghetti junctions, you have Atlanta. So... It's very closed in, and a lot of people come in from out of town to go to Atlanta. And we had our first cases in Georgia in Atlanta. But we haven't had much spread other than towards the north part of Georgia. Now, it's slowly making its way down. We actually have a couple cases here in Macon, apparently. But then again, I haven't actually never met anyone who had corona or who had any symptoms of the said corona. I, I can honestly say is, is that... With this whole virus, what's going on? We can't deny the positives that are coming out of it. <clears throat> Nature is thriving. I don't know if you've ever paid attention to that side of this whole entire part of uh, of the COVID virus. Nature is thriving very much so because of the because of all the shutdowns that's happened worldwide. It is actually becoming greener. Our ecosystem is actually slowly starting to come more, had add more color and more gunshot to it. And I believe, honestly, it could all the conspiracies. From what I'm seeing, from what I'm seeing thrive, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm judging by what I'm witnessing. And what I'm witnessing is that the human race is being stopped doing what the apex um, being on this planet is supposed to do, which is adapt and conquer. The Earth is, Earth is kind of, in a way, Balancing out the damage that we've done by causing something like this to come out and break out and to make us all shut down for a bit. You understand what I'm saying? I believe that it's healing itself in property to keep itself alive longer. I'm not saying that the earth is a as a living being by any means, but I do say that it has an ecosystem. I believe there's a rhyme or reason to everything. And I believe that's just how life works. This is how life decides to equal out the damage we've done for nature as we started becoming more of a concrete jungle than an actual wood assessed jungle across our lands. And we have started becoming more of an artificial, artificial land. You understand what I'm saying? More and more land is becoming more artificial by what we built. And you see deers taking over certain parts of where they haven't had overruns in a while. They haven't had, um, you know, rivers, streams. They're cleaner than they've ever been. Um, you know, I could go ahead, give off 
many examples is just all that has to do with one thing and that's all nature all outside human being and all human relevancy this virus is meant to hurt us to stop us from hurting the earth anymore to keep us from a shorter life is what i could see it as but i could also see it as as a person who has been raised in the church and who is biblically knowledge by i would give myself credit by a good bit um, this could be a part of the seven years of uh, trials and tribulations we got to go through before the rapture. You know what I'm saying? Like, I haven't ever thought until this virus broke out and until it started reaching here. And I went to Walmart a few days ago, seeing people wearing masks. I'm wearing a mask, too. I'm, I, I was already gunked up. Now, and that's also a funny thing, too, is that whenever you go to the more impoverished side of uh, we have three Walmarts. We have an upper class Walmart, a regular Walmart, and then like just the hood Walmart, right? The more and more you lower, you go down to the class, the more and more you see the less of that protection that people are using, much less the employees even using their regulated rules and assessments. Like, you know, sanitizing down the, the buggies, shit like that, offering out gloves, keeping uh, hand sanitizer stock, like, no. No one gives a fuck. I heard someone cough. I was about ready to get out of there. <coughs> it's like, this virus is meant for us. This virus is meant to target us. Why us? Well, what have we done? Nothing but uh, for the past 200 years, really, since the Industrial Revolution. <laughs> Cause pollution and harm to this earth. What does earth do to help heal itself? Slow down man. So that she can have more time. That's how I see it. Land's thriving. Uh, you know, natural land is thriving. And you can't deny that. Thank you, Lars. I think that was actually, I'm really glad you brought that up. That's really true and relevant. If you've seen the satellite images of the pollution clouds all around the world that have just disappeared into thin air. The smog that's been there year after year, day after day, just gone. The water's running clear in places that were dirty so you couldn't see the bottom now they're clear uh this is giving nature a bit of breathing room there's no question about that and earth did need that so it doesn't hey. hurt to see, to see the silver lining and thank you for pointing that out lars if you want to make one or one or two more minutes uh, there's no rebuttal but if you want to make a one or two minute closing statement before you pass the mic you go ahead okay what our job is as human beings, since we have been ooga boogas, right? Talk about uh, the didn't mean, yeah. No, that's that's ooga boogas means all primal life form from Neanderthal to Homo sapien. And it, it's it's the time of whenever we were still discovering will and what one and two is. From that time, we have been made to adapt. No other animal here is here on Earth is made to artificially adapt we are made to um conquer sea conquer air conquer land where dolphins have more articulated minds and more neurotransmitters and more neurons you, you know what lars this is a little beyond the point of what we're talking okay, about so on, thank you very much we, we are going to pass that mic no it, you I'm made not, some I'm really no lars you made really good points you made really argument. good points no you made a lot of really good points you really did he really did, and but we're not going into dolphins and that now. That's more round table open. So thank you, Lars. That was actually really well said. Gummy official, my man. Uh, would you like to weigh in on uh, coronavirus, how it's affecting you, where you are, what part of the world, and what's up with you? Uh, going once, gummy official. Going twice, we'll come back to you. Uh, okay, so that means we're up to I guess Luigi Torti, my man Luigi. Are you there? Would you like to weigh in for the people on coronavirus? Sure. I'll just add a briefly uh, in the Southern California region. Um, all the restaurants, you know, are all really clean. They're wiping all the stuff down. They're not letting you sit inside. The supermarket didn't have the soap that I needed and they were out of the hand soap. Um, they're out of paper towels. Kind of pissed me off. Um, but Having said that, most of the other stuff is there. Um, personally, I, I'm very antisocial, so this has been 
good for me that it cleared up the roads and things like that. And I think uh, society is going to hopefully shift towards more of that, um, you know, move. Cause I was getting really tired of just like, you know, people walking around with their fat, you know, spitty mouths and stuff in public and just lack of social awareness was becoming a big problem. So I think what Lars said was pretty interesting in the sense that, you know, we see nature, we see the world do things, uh, animals migrate. These are incredibly complex things. It's not hard to think that if humans kept on the track of just fucking up the earth, that the polar bears and the, you know, everything would just fucking attack us and kill us or something. So I guess, yeah. All right. So uh, was there anything else you wanted to say, uh, Mr. Luigi about coronavirus, how it's affected your neighborhood before you pass the mic? Uh, that's all. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Luigi. Magical bum, magical album. Uh, do you have uh, anything for us? Oh, yeah. Just going to take a dab right now. So, so far as my experience goes, um, my life hasn't really changed too much because, like most, like some of you guys said, um, I'm not that – well, I'm a social guy, but I stay at home a lot. But, you know, now I just can't really go to the bar or something. You know, I can't play pool. So that's really all about, you know, it's changed in my social life. But like school, um, my school shut down. We're going to an online format. Um, and I don't know how long that's supposed to last, you know, it's supposed to last for the rest of the semester, but we don't know how long it's going to last. You know, uh, I'm supposed to go to CSU next semester. So I have no idea what's going to happen. Um, but as far as like uh, outside, like there's like this a tinge of, anxiety in the air the stores are still empty there's no meat on the shelves um you know people are people are stocking up i went to walmart actually yesterday spent 260 dollars and i couldn't believe i found two bags of 20 pounds of rice I, they were the only ones and i went there like right when they opened up too so if anyone's gonna go to walmart just try when they open up but uh but my family's stocking up other people, I don't know what they're doing, but um, it just, they don't seem like they care. You know, I see more people walking around in my apartment complex, you know, uh, kids are still playing. I saw a guy uh, playing with his daughter in the puddle, you know, like it was, it was cute, you know, like, you know, raining, playing in the puddle, but like, that's like how you catch a cold and it's flu season, you know? So it's kind of, it's kind of crazy how uh, unaware people are, but um but for so far, what I'm doing is I'm what I'm doing is I'm trying to prep, um, and so going to Walmart, getting all that food. That was I got like two months worth of food for three people, so uh, me, my roommate, and my brother, and uh, so that's phase one. That was phase one. Phase two is to build my uh, uh, go bag, which is going to have two weeks worth of food, a tent, bedroll, fifty feet of rope, carabiners, duct tape, and IFAC with a tourniquet. An Israeli bandage, halo seals, quick clot, gauze, bandages, scissors, needles, razors, gloves, emergency blankets, masks, activated charcoal for chemical burns, alcohol wipes, iodine, super glue, medical tape, butterfly stitches, you know, and like a maybe like a full body suit, water purifier, and some other stuff. So once it's done, then I go on to phase three which is where I go and build my AR. And I've been talking to a few people in the server about building ARs. And, um, and what I've been seeing, what I've been noticing is uh, even online, the stores, the gun stores are, are running up, they're, they're running dry, you know, like uh, especially shotgun sales, you know, those, most of those went out of stock on some of the more, uh, you know, popular websites. And um, so I've decided to go a more alternative route uh, just in case, um, you know, one, I don't want uh, to, not have a gun so <laughs> i decided to build my own which is i'm uh I've been, i don't know if anyone here knows anything about 80 uh, percent lower receivers but um but basically an 80 percent uh receiver is uh, a the lower receiver is 80 percent complete so it comes to you 80 percent complete uh you put it into a jig kit and you mill out the rest and then now you have a perfectly functioning lower receiver that you're only in minecraft, minecraft right What's up? We're, we're talking ma Minecraft, right? No, I'm talking All about... legal activities are always only in Minecraft, obviously. But uh, yes. I wasn't following what you were saying. But yeah, generally in Minecraft. Yeah, so yeah, like, I mean, there's a lot of, in Minecraft, 
it's federally legal in Minecraft, but depending on the state, you know, you have to get it, uh, you know, serialized. It's up to you to serialize uh, your Minecraft AR. So, um, I got, I have my notes. So, oh shit. But basically, um, all right, sorry. Um, so basically, yeah, um, I'm just doing that. I'm getting some ammo. Uh, ammo is getting pretty sparse too. I chose to go with the AR because it, uh, you know, uh, it's more, uh, there's a lot more parts around in America and there's, you know, it's a more common 5.56 five, is a pretty common round. Um, so just in case shit really does hit the fan, you know, like I don't really expect to use any of this stuff except for my AR. I'm definitely going to take that shit out to the desert, you know. <laughs> but um, but then once that's done, I'm just going to go on to phase four, which is building up supplies, maybe getting a solar panel, some batteries or something. And just like planning, you know, just like looking out for bug out locations, uh, finding local water sources, uh, planting food on my hiking trails. I'm going to go and just like drop little like quarter pieces of potatoes everywhere you know, just in case. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I mean, I don't really know how bad it's going to get, but like when all this shit kicked off, I never felt so vulnerable, you know, um, and I didn't like that, you know, so I rather, I rather spend all this money and do all these crazy preparations and look like an asshole in, in like a couple months um, than needing it, you know, in, in a couple months. So, I mean, what I, what I think of this, I think this is, uh, you know, honestly, I think this whole Corona thing is just a big fluke. I don't think it's a conspiracy. I think people are just dumb and governments are incompetent, you know, but I do think that this is going to be our new 9-11. I, I think we're going to see a lot of policy changes. I think we're going to uh, – I bet we're going to see the return of terror alerts. I don't know if you guys remember those, right? Um, but I think it will be like infection alerts or something. I think people are going to use this as a way to grasp power and land. I think Putin has been doing some interesting things in Russia. I'm not really too sure. I haven't really been catching up. But, um, but I think, you know, if this does last – um, it's going to be because of these policies and all of the effects that coronavirus brought on, you know, not so much as an infection, really. But, um, but, you know, I'm still preparing. Um, and um, I really don't think, honestly, I think all this is just going to blow over in a couple months. Once flu season is over, I think it's going to be done. I think we're all going to laugh. I think we're, these Corona beer sales are going to skyrocket and everyone's going to go to the beach and drink beers and be like, yeah, man, that's, it was just bullshit. But that just might be my optimism, you know. Um, but because, I mean, I just – I can't really – it still kind of surreals me. I've been planning to go to university for like this entire year. So that's where my mind's at still. So it's kind of unfathomable to me to think that I would have to um, live a different life, you know, like a secluded life, a hoarding life, a survival life. But I don't know. That's, uh, that's my two cents on it. Um, yeah, mic drop. So uh, I'll take my privilege to kind of bounce off some of these ideas as we go. One, um, we should do a survivalism and prepping episode, Magical Bum, uh, yeah, just good. in general. I think that would be cool. Get more, yeah. more detail of that. I just wanted to quickly respond to that you'll never look like a fool for prepping and then nothing happens. It's That's not how it works. It's not like, oh, you look stupid. You got ready for something that didn't happen. Now you got ready for something, now you're ready for anything, right? You look stupid not being ready. That's all there is to it. I, I don't look stupid when I, I'm ready for something that didn't happen because now I'm ready for anything, right? So prepping will never be egg on your face. Egg on your face is your little girl or wife saying, hey, why don't we have any food? And you saying, because I thought things were never going to change. Mm. So that's yeah. just uh, a quick point. Normal yeah, guy, uh, and thank you, Magical Bone. Sorry, uh, my headset broke. So, anyways, normal guy, uh, are you there? And would you like to share where you are and how Corona is hitting you and what you think about it? Normal guy, go on once. Right, we'll skip normal guy. We'll come back to him. NSA, you there? Yeah, dude. What's up? Hello, everyone. What's up? So, so um, I am in Austin, Texas. Uh, I don't have a vehicle, so I don't really travel around much, but I do walk around the town, at least the northern part, and I go through uh, one of the major shopping centers pretty frequently. It's all shut down. Uh, Austin, Texas, they bought, they board up the, we have like a, an equivalent to Bourbon Street down on, it's called 7th Street. It's totally, uh, totally boarded up. Mayor's closed everything. 
Um, there's been plenty of food though. Like every, all the stores seem to be uh, full of stuff to get stuff. Um, limits on water and stuff. They seem to be regulating at Costco, you know, our, our grocery stores and stuff like that. Um, as for me, like I'm an optimist, but like also a nihilist in the sense, or a fatalist more so, I, because I mean, I've been in this project here with the ET bullshit for four and a half years, so everybody gets to experience what isolation like mine is like. Um, but uh, I still think that everybody will get over and it'll just be a fucking growing pains. I, I do think it's an order out of chaos situation happening here. I think they're sensationalizing it massively. Um, I hope they use the opportunity to do some good things. Like, for example, you could give the corona to somebody and then just special ops them out and be like, blame the virus. It's a good opportunity for something like that. Uh, for a lot of the uh, shitheads in the world, which there are lots of them. I'm not a Q guy or any of these fucking, you know, oh my God, conspiracies. They're going to go kill all the guys. But I do think they're going to do uh, some secret squirrel shit. And uh, I hope it's for the better. Because there's a lot of bad things going on right now on this planet. And uh, we need a, we, we kind of need something like this. I don't really want it, obviously, but we need something like this. Because, uh, well, people are pretty... Uh, comfortable you know what i mean like they, they need to shake up i'm not a new world order kind of guy i am a globalist in the sense i wish we would have a world order because i know the technologies that are out there that we're going to be able to access at some point um but uh i don't want to be told what to think as <laughs> if you know what i mean so thought police stuff but we'll see how this evolves out of it as far as how the governments react and all the whining they do and the orange man bad stuff i think it'll be kind of funny so i'm just gonna sit here eating popcorn and good old austin texas and uh eating my chicky nuggies I got, I got frozen food i got enough for i don't know i got right now i have enough for like probably a week and a half something like that uh, ramen chicken nuggets fish sticks uh beef jerky with, with rice mm, chicky nugget yeah so like well i do i do the protein thing too so i mean i just maintain protein balance um but yeah we'll, we'll see what happens i uh i hope general robert p ashley gets a big picture of my my hairy butthole but i digress all right um, I don't know you are. yeah did you have any on fantasy uh no, I just hope the shadow government guys listening uh, wake the fuck up and stop playing around with people's lives. Get us, get us back to living a civilization that's uh, worthwhile. You guys wonder why the ETs won't land. You wonder why everybody is so fucking fatalistic about the human species. Well, you're part of the problem. So You're a big part of the problem. Yeah, and you're not anything, so don't even flex on it. It's cute, though. I like it. I like when they... Uh, like when the little guys try and uh, puff their chests. I am done. I just finished up. Show. <clears throat> so thank you, NSA. Uh, thank you very much. Next up is pistol shots. Pistol shots. Are you there? And just to tell us about your coronavirus story. Yes, I'm here. Uh, yeah, I can do a couple minutes. All right. So I'm here in. I'm here. Can you hear me? Uh, I thought I saw him key up. Am I lagging, or can you guys hear him? You're yeah, lagging. He, he, you're a robot, buddy. Yeah, he's he, he. We can all hear him. Pistol. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Uh, yeah. So I'm here in Alberta, Canada. Uh, I have not left the house in several days, so I'm not the best source of what's going on. Uh, I understand the local grocery store. They've got tape on the floor so people stand six feet apart in the lineups. Uh, I've also heard that toilet paper is now at the customer service counter. Um, but aside from that, you know, food supply is stable. It's normal. It's business as usual. Um, eating good food every day. Um, I got a buddy who lives out by Pigeon Lake. Uh, he told me all the small kind of mom and pop shops there have been shut down as it's not possible to do social distancing uh, in those stores by the lake there. So uh, that is rough. Uh, my dad's working from home. He's got a government job. Um, I know someone who's a teacher who's working from home. Um, all the classes are canceled, although the schools are still open. Teachers are working, that kind of thing. 
Uh, if you go on the local website for movie times, it says that the theaters are going to reopen April 2nd. Um, so, I mean, there is definitely a huge impact as far as, you know, we've seen empty toilet paper shelves, although that's kind of bounced back to normal, aside from the fact that they're kind of restricting uh, that type of panic buying. And then the school thing is totally unprecedented. That was pretty shocking when that came on the news about a week ago. Uh, but even then, you know, I'm hoping to go to tech school in May and and looks like things will. Um, we are predicting that things will be back to normal by then. So it's kind of like, yeah, it's bad, but uh, I don't see anybody panicking. Um, I do know, you know, my dad usually doesn't go for anything like prepping. He's been very affected by the the news reports and he has been stockpiling canned food but not really to an extreme extent. I, I think we're just going for maybe, you know, seven days worth of food and water in the basement. Uh, but even then, you know, if movie theaters are opening again in April, if schools are going to be back to normal in like May, um, yeah, this is kind of like far from the most extreme impact, even in this country. All right. Thank you, sir. I want to take a step back and offer the mic to Gummy Official. He said he fixed his mic. Would you like to take your so, turn, sir? Can you guys hear me? Sure can. Loud and clear. Uh, um, so I'm from the United Kingdom. Um, I think most of you guys already know the situation here in uh, Europe is not really good. Um, especially Italy. We've actually surpassed uh, China. In Italy, they've actually surpassed China with the amount of cases and deaths. Um, so, yeah, um, so I think you guys might know that we've got um, an NHS. So that's where um, healthcare is free. We we'll still pay for it through our uh, taxes, but um, anyone can access healthcare. No, no matter whether you're um, from a poor background or rich background, it doesn't really matter. Anyone can access it. But uh, at the moment, uh, doctors, nurses, they, they really don't have access to equipment and they're also getting inf infected by helping others. And So the government could have uh, prevented this, really, I think, because now in England, 500 people died now. Um, a couple of days ago, it was already 300. So, and we've known about this for four weeks. And I just think that um, half of this is an agenda, or like I'm, I'm stuck in between whether it's an agenda or whether it's just a lesson to be learned by humanity. Um, I believe that humans just they think they can do whatever they want on planet Earth without any consequences. Um, we 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 tend to think that every animal we can choose to eat or that decide like fate, you know, for like animals and stuff. And I just feel like as humans we've taken that step like too far, and it's just come back to bite us. But at the same time, I feel that um, at the end of this, they they might offer vaccines, and these vaccines we don't know what what they're planning to do with them. You know, I've heard um, they've already done testing in America for vaccines. Um, yeah, so I'm just not sure whether it's a gender or just something that we need to learn and take as a lesson. Thank you, sir. Uh, I appreciate that. Gummy official. Now, next up on the mic will be the original, the inimitable, inimitable, the one and only Sir Pauly. All right. See, St. Marie, Canada, Ontario, for the layman term. Like, I don't know. We got 1,000 cases across fucking Ontario. We've already had 15 deaths. Uh, two deaths are actually probably about 300 kilometers from where I am going through the same quarantine factors as everybody else. Lie, tape on the ground there at the grocery store. Don't tap your card. Let it hover. Um, offering wipes and this and that. Like 
they should be doing that before anybody walks into a fucking store. There should be somebody there handing out masks. If you ain't got a fucking mask when you walk in, it should be fucking handed out. Um, uh, other shit, um, I've seen a lot of troop movements um, within the United States and Canada, but I don't know, that's on another level. I don't know why they're going to start moving our artillery around. That's a weird factor, but other than that, it's like, just keep your social distance from people, man. If somebody gets sick, man, like, fuck, self-quarantine. Look out for the, your other fellow humans. I'm done. Thank you, Polly, my fellow Canadian. Uh, Sir Shaddock, Sir Polly and Sir Shaddock, Knights of the Round Table. What do you have to say for us or for yourself, Sir Shaddock, in these plague days? Sure, sure. Uh, so, my name's Sir Shaddock. Hello to everyone I have not met yet and everyone I will. Uh, I'm from the United States, specifically uh, a suburb of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I'm actually going to go over some like data that I've been looking up. So. Uh, for the most part, I kind of see the coronavirus as something that we should be concerned about. Uh, I don't know a lot of people play down the severity of it, but I'm going to go over some statistics and hopefully bring to light a couple of things. So currently, as it stands, uh, the world mortality rate that we can currently calculate during a pandemic, which is there's several factors that go into such, but it's hard to calculate the actual death rate of the disease because... So many people get it at once, and the overflow into the hospitals and healthcare systems leads to avoidable deaths. But currently, as it stands, the world mortality rate is estimated as of today, according to CNBC, and I'm going to put these links in the coronavirus chat, at 4.5%. And that's calculated dividing the 22,000 deaths by the currently estimated 495,000 confirmed cases as of Thursday afternoon, according to John Hopkins. Um, in my region, or sorry, in the United States, there's about 82,000 de- uh, cases with 8,000 deaths. And in my area, there's currently, in Pennsylvania, there's 16,000 cases confirmed, most of which are in uh, Philadelphia, which is on the eastern side of the state. And in my particular counties, um, there is 133 cases and two deaths in the county that I work in. And then 24 cases and zero deaths in the county I live in. Holy fuck. Wait. We had somebody, shout out, we had somebody else here from Philadelphia, actually. They were talking about a pandemic there, literally. Well, yeah, I'm from Pittsburgh, not Philadelphia. They're two sides of the state. Oh, but, okay. uh, the, the way I kind of have seen it so far in the state, um, personally affected, I know one person who may be exposed and may have the disease. We're still waiting to see for testing. Um, but the way that Pennsylvania has been affected, essentially all restaurants have been uh, essentially ordered to close and face citations or loss of license if they don't close. They are allowed to keep open, open any drive throughs but you can't have a sit-down place for people to gather that goes for bars, restaurants, uh, grocery stores for the most part. During the first kind of week or two, I know this is kind of like the third and fourth week, but during the first week, a lot of grocery stores, there's a lot of panic buying, obviously a lot of toilet paper and all that kind of stuff. That seems to have passed that initial panic buy and people are kind of uh, sort of normalizing, I guess. There's still a lot of empty shelves because they're restocking, but it seems to have lessened to an extent. In terms of population on the street, there actually today, I, I went outside expecting it to be a little chilly, like a like 40, 30 degree day, and it was like 50 or 60, so I took off my jacket. There's actually people jogging, walking. Uh, traffic was lighter um, for a Thursday, but uh, I was honestly surprised to see as many people out as I did. Um, the other thing I want to go over is kind of how the body's affected. Um, which some I'm sure many people know there's maybe repeat information, but essentially the most at risk group is anyone above 60 or has any kind of underlying health condition or respiratory specific uh, problems. And essentially what happens a COVID virus, it, uh, it attacks the lungs and it attacks the immune system in a way. So while it's getting lined up in the lungs, any immune system cells, white blood cells in certain, uh, certain cells of the body, I think it's T-killer cells and another kind, actually get infected by the virus and kind of go haywire. And the immune system has to kind of work in overdrive to kind of clear it out. 
And in the process, what happens is the, the lining of your lungs, the cells that protect the uh, kind of the, the air sacs within your lung, they get damaged and essentially they don't uh, they don't repair like uh, the inside of your lungs. It doesn't get repaired so as normal it, tissue it, it would. Coronavirus is kind of like one, vaping. One, one, one second, one second, Sorry, there's no interrupting allowed, and there, this is a round table, and so you'll be muted until your turn, which will come up. So hang in there. And Go so the shadow, yeah, the the lining cells of your lung kind of get destroyed in the process, leaving open uh, those air sacs to other bacteria. And when that happens, pneumonia and other bacteria can come in and cause. Uh, obviously, bacterial infection and uh, other conditions, and that actually is what leads to the death of so many people. Um, and that's why anyone over the age of 60 has at least, a, according to what we can see, uh, upwards of a 5% or higher death rate. But the main concern for everyone else is that if you do get this virus, you will, in some way or another, depending on each person, depending on each case and severity, suffer certain respiratory... Please don't interrupt. You will suffer certain respiratory issues for the rest of your life. And that's something that I don't think that everyone is currently aware of that. Uh, one second, sorry. I thought there was something in here. It was in my another channel, sorry. But that's uh, that's the main concern for everyone else that they need to be aware of, that even if you do catch this virus and you think you're young, you're not going to be affected, you're going to have respiratory problems because the lining of your lungs essentially gets torn up in a way by your own body's immune system. Uh, I'm going to post all these links in the coronavirus chat that I'm getting all this information from. Um, but I think the main takeaways from this is that this is kind of uh, a glimpse into what happens when a system kind of begins to break down, when so many people are filing for unemployment and don't have the ability to soak. I think the most recent estimate was an American household couldn't absorb more than a $500 emergency at one time. And in this case, we're seeing people going unemployed. Uh, I myself have, I'm not unemployed, but my work is closed down as not essential. So this past week, I've been technically unemployed. Luckily, I was able to have enough money saved up and I've got my taxes coming in, all these other things I've got going to, to keep afloat. But uh, for all these other families, um, the only thing we can say is to, if you do live in America and you do know some friends that are suffering, uh, do help them in any way that you're able to, because some people, some families won't be able to get the help they need because the system was not prepared for something like this. And hopefully going forward, we will take this information that we see like a, a virus that doesn't have a high mortality rate and prepare ourselves for a virus that eventually will come that does have a high mortality rate that instead of people dying and just, or sorry, instead of people just getting it and walking about, like there's nothing to worry about, um, people getting it and fearing for the lives. Um, because if you do get it, there's a higher chance, 10, 20, 30% that you would die. I think that's where we need to look in the future. And as well, uh, the kind of stimulus bill that's going to be supposedly coming from the U.S. government, um, estimated to be, I believe it was $1,200 for each family, plus $500 for each kid. Um, if you make under seventy-five dollars to $99,000 a year, you'll get that. If you make over, I don't believe you get anything except for $500 per child. But I'm a huge proponent of universal basic income, and I think if everyone had a universal basic income of $1,000 a month, that would be something that could offset a lot of this problem from the get-go. And with that, I'm going to give away the mic. So I would like to take my privilege as the moderator or whatever to, I mean, first of all, thank you, Sir Shaddock. Second of all, damn, we have good people here on the round table. That was an amazing report, Sir Shaddock. Uh, I would like to, first of all, schedule our podcast, which has not happened yet. As you know, I do an interview podcast with uh, most members of the server, uh, certainly all the core members. So me and you need to do our interview podcast. I also think you should have a recurring show because that was some good material right there. And that's what makes this place special is we are a volunteer content creators collective as well as an on the ground global independent news media outlet. And what you just heard right there was Sir Shadda giving you his own independent analysis, right? He didn't get paid. I didn't ask him to do that. And that he's an intelligent guy and he just told you some deep shit. And all of you have been saying deep shit as well. And we are now getting deep shit from around the globe for free to a platform of 2,500 people podcasted, live streamed on YouTube, on all social media, you know, it's the real deal folks. And that's why with this coronavirus thing, we're able to see the benefits just like we did with the Australian wildfires. 
just like we did with the Iran World War Three scare. We're getting live on the ground footage and coverage from around the world, currently in audio, soon in video as well. So again, thank you, Sir Shaddock. I know why we promoted you tonight at the round table. Uh, now, yeah. my man, the legend, the man, the myth, uh, Open Eye Project. Are you still here? Did he leave? No. Open Eye Project. Uh, tell us what this uh, coronavirus situation looks like from the fifth dimension, please. Well, I was thinking uh, it's a good way to kill these fucking demons, you know. I, I would be part of the uh, research, too, because, we, uh, you know, if we could evacuate the cities and, and spread spread the shit all over the fucking cities, uh, we could get rid of these damn demons, you know. Um, I don't know what these things, there's so many of them. Um, I don't know what the fact is going to happen with this virus thing. Um, now the darkness that I see or I found out about too as well, but, uh, the blue dust, I don't think it's part of the darkness. It's just a technology of aliens to make the sky blue and shit like that. Uh, but I call it angel dust. It's like blue dust. Uh, but the darkness is the big problem. Um, what happens is, I've, one time I seen, uh, but I want this fire, you know, I, there's different ways to fight these invisible dimension things. Um, but the thing is, uh, we could burn them and all that and catch the uh, darkness on fire and stuff like that too. Uh, by spiritual means, but it's going to have to be like World War I. Um, this is like a good test run, you know, um, about what's going to happen if we do fight World War I. Because uh, we're going to have to come with a universal money system where all the people that don't have jobs or whatever get free education, like uh, $1,200 or, you know, um, maybe $1,500, $2,000 to uh, survive for them and then plan B would be people that work and they would get the same thing. It'd be a universal uh, income thing. Uh, and then, you know, um, then we could move, you know, we'd have volunteers. It'd be like a space, um, you know, like the space force we have. It would be a lot part of that, but I got to get together with some big time scientists and figure out, what to do. I actually got to talk to some freaking aliens that the government's talking to. But this virus, I don't think it's going to kill these demons or whatever. It might, you know. Um, so I don't know if that's why they might be wanting to put this shit out. I don't know. But, I, you know, I think it's China, right? I think that stuff, China let it loose or something. I don't really know the details. But I don't think this virus is, it might kill some of them like it kills humans. I don't know. Uh, so, but, um, yeah, that's all I got to say about the virus, too, and stay away from people for a long time, you know. Well, thank you, Open Eye Project. Uh, again, that is the kind of unique commentary that I promise you, I promise you, you will not find anywhere but the Roundtable Discord server. So, Open Eye Project, you're the man. I love you. You know I love you. And as long as you walk the planet Earth, I want you speaking your point of view on the roundtable server because nobody else sees the world quite the way you do, sir. But he's and in a similar sense, my friend Slim Shady here uh, has a very unique perspective. And I'm 100% certain that if I hand the mic to Slim Shady right now and tell him, Slim Shady, we're talking about the coronavirus. It's the COVID-19 live roundtable special event podcast. You have the mic. You are an on-the-ground reporter. The world is watching, sir. How is coronavirus affecting your community? How is it affecting you? And especially, what is the Slim Shady take on Corona and COVID-19? Um, well, actually, I want, COVID, to, if I'm uh, COVID. I, want, I want to help my mom go grocery shopping today. And two people were so... I've never had hostile people at me at the market, ever, in my entire life. And I've gone to the same grocery store my entire life. And two people were so hostile... They actually, like, said something to me. And granted, like, one person was a police officer, and you have to stay 
like 30 feet away from police and i didn't know that so it's actually 10 feet but anyway he he said stay 30 feet away he he even said that 30 feet away um i go 30 feet directly behind him and keep him moving i i his window was open and i was like you know thank you for your serving our streets and i didn't even get to say streets and he was like 30 feet away and then I go in and then I'm in the store and there's two people in front of me and they're, and I'm like, you know, they're not moving. And I'm like, excuse me, they're not moving. And I'm like, excuse me, and they're not moving. And I'm like, you know, move, you know, move, move. And the guy fucking flips the fuck out on me. And, um... So and and every everybody has like my um, masks, and it's it, it 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 was crazy. I've never seen masks. And then there was no toilet paper. I had to go in the other store to get toilet paper. And then I go in the other store that's next door. There's no toilet paper in that store. So somebody said that you have to go to the help desk to get toilet paper. <laughs> No, you can't even do that. You have to go to, like, Walmart. All right. So, thank you very much, Slim Shady. We're now going to take a step backwards, and we are going to revisit uh, someone who got missed, unless they left the room. Well, Case. Hello, Case. You weren't here before, and you didn't get to speak. We're doing the COVID-19 roundtable, which means everyone gets to turn on the mic and... Would you like to take a turn and tell us where you live and what it's like where you are in terms of Corona and what you think about it? Going once, Case. It looks like he's trying to talk. Case, it looks like you're keying up, but we can't hear you. At least I can. Sorry, I just need to adjust my microphone. Uh, So, yeah, I'm from London. Um, I have a friend um, connected to my family who has died, passed away from the coronavirus. Um, he was 60 years old. He was the uncle of my wife's best friend. Um, uh, he had an underlying medical condition, uh, arthritis, which he was being treated for with um, drugs which suppressed his immune system. So he was uh, susceptible to, to uh, the, the, disease, the disease, and he has passed away as such. Uh, he's with God now, so that's good. Is there anything else you'd like to know? Well, there's two parts to it. The first part is tell us about your community, how coronavirus has affected you, what you've seen on the ground. That's us utilizing the roundtable as a global network for on the ground kind of reporting. But the other part is what's your analysis? So one is what do you observe? And the other question is what do you think about it? What do you think this is all about? How do you feel about it? So, um, so clearly there is a virus, uh, and I've been connected to it on a personal basis. Um, whether it's whether the worldwide like approach and the media coverage is appropriate, and the the bills that are being passed through government are um, also appropriate, I'm not sure. Um, there is clearly some connection with regards to uh, implementing uh, wide scale vaccinations uh, that's hidden within about 360 odd pages of the UK bill. Um, there is also a discussion of uh, a digital identity system um, which will be deployed and I think um, there's, there are connections there as well so like uh, uh, you'll be uh, you'll essentially be sh- uh, with regards to expenditures uh, or any kind of uh, finance based system uh, if you are not vaccinated uh, that's, that's my perspective uh, that seems to be what's happening do you, can you can you buy guns in your in your country? Pardon? No, no, of course not. No. No. Thank you for participating. All right, Nicarel, you joined. Uh, I'm going to unmute you and I'm going to ask you, hey. where are you Hi. and what's Corona uh, like and what do you think about it? I, I live in Knoxville, Tennessee. And... Uh, 
We have we have about uh, uh, 20 cases at the moment. I don't know if they actually live in Knoxville because the way that they report this shit in the state and from what I understand across the country is regardless of where you're at at the moment, like your home address is where you're reported at. So there could be 12 people. There could be like 15. There could be like two. I know there are a couple people at least, but I'm not necessarily concerned about it because I'm a fucking neat and I sit at home and read 4chan posts about this shit and pretend that it's a happening. But, you know, it's not really happening to me because I live in fucking bumfuck deep Egypt. Like, have you played Earthbound Beginnings? I'm in Podunk. I'm in Pallet Town. And a lot of you are, you know? No one's going to know anyone that actually dies from this shit. They're going to figure out a way to, you know, flip it head over heels. And they're already doing that, obviously. And we're all going to get bum fucked in the next like five to ten years. I mean, like, frankly, everyone's been saying this already that we're going to be in a fascist state, and, you know, in the next like 10, 15 years. It's it's history, not necessarily repeating itself, but rhyming, as uh, uh, Mark Twain said, you know, history doesn't repeat itself. It fucking rhymes. Um, What was it? The Spanish flu? In the 20s? I don't know. They find a reason to fuck us. It's 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 a nothing burger, but they're playing it up to be something that's actually really big, you know? So uh, don't get your pants in a fucking tussle because you're going to die over nothing. But, you know, just know that, like, th- th- this is an excuse to take away your rights. So, like, I don't know. Be chill. You're good. It's all going to be okay. Also, like, there's a, a Bible bot that you can download if you want to get Bible quotes for the Discord. I They had it in another server I was in. Just look up Bible bot. So you can, like, quote your, like, thing and, like, say, like, Revelations, like, 420, and it'll pop up in the Thank chat. Thank you. That was really good, yeah. and we are aware of Bible bot, and perhaps we yeah. shall get it. Um, All right, yeah. Was there yeah. one last statement you want to make, uh, coronavirus, or your thoughts, uh, um, server uh, bots uh, aside? Uh, 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 mm. fuck Janies, fuck trannies, and you should mute me right now. Right now. Uh, right. Yeah. Well, you know, you were doing pretty good until that. Uh, so thank you, Beckerell, for most of that. Um, now, I want to give Normal Guy another shot. Uh, Normal Guy, uh, are you there? Come on, Normal Guy. We want to hear what you have to say. Stop being not at your mic. Uh, really quick, since normal guy's not there right this second, can I just quickly hop in and say that it's kind of messed up that he said that nobody here knows somebody that has died from it or has been really affected from it. I know somebody who has been affected from it and is on the downward path. And I also know that somebody here just said that somebody that he knows died from it so or at least he knows of a family member who knows that said a kid died. died earlier yeah yeah so I'm, I'm just saying that, that that's kind of messed up and I, I i don't want anyone here that heard that to to feel like we all don't disagree with that motherfucker yeah well thank you and indeed we did hear of a child who died which is alarming because previously i had heard this disease mostly spared children and perhaps it does mostly but this is a reminder that even mostly uh, doesn't mean that even kids aren't dying. And again, I run this server, right? 2,500 people. And I was thinking, huh, it's not interesting. that 2,500 plus people in every country on earth. And not one of them has the coronavirus or even like a direct relation who has the coronavirus. That is interesting. Yeah, well, I, but I now we do. Now we have members who are seeing this. And so now we know yeah. that, yes, this is real. And, I mean, I knew that already. There was people on my server, conspiracy head people, that are being like, oh, it's all fake, it's all a psyop. No. They use real things as psyops. It's called problem, reaction, solution. It's called crisis capitalism. It's called never let a good uh, crisis go to waste. And, yes, they can bioengineer and release viruses, but, no, this is not a, a fake thing. Whether they invented this virus or it's natural and they're taking advantage of it, believe me, coronavirus is real, and when you get it, you will feel pretty damn shitty and sick. And like Sir Shaddock said, unfortunately, this isn't just that you get sick, you get better virus. This is fucks you up for life virus. You know, yeah, I'm going to uh, take my uh, turn the, later. The, oh, anyway, shit. Sorry, sorry. Actually, I wanted, to ask, I wanted to ask Shaddock that. Like, that literally scars your DNA, right? Like, that's like the type of damage you're talking? It's not the DNA. It, it rips up the, the lining. Uh, it's uh, the F, F uh, something cells of your lungs. It essentially 
it hijacks your immune system and your immune system's own defense system, kind of like artillery shells, your own lung lining, exposing the, uh, is it the avalo- avioli or whatever it's called, the air sacs, to yeah. other bacteria that would never normally be exposed to bacteria. And then and that doesn't heal properly. The point is it does permanent damage. It's not just something you get sick, you get better. It's you get sick, you get maimed, you get better, right? If I fuck you up, you might recover, but you might be never the same. That's basically how this is. It's going to fuck you up. Yeah, you might, you know, quote unquote, recover. You might never be the same. And that's why it's a little fucked. But uh, I want to make sure I'm not missing anybody. Normal guy, you're really not there. You fucking fake Canadian piece of shit. Get on your mic. I love you. All right. Well, he's an honorary Canadian. We're not going to get to hear from him tonight. But uh, everybody else has had a turn. Shit. All right. It's my hey, turn. Hey, uh, uh, Shogun. Does anyone else want to, you know, chime? Well, no, no, I can't do that because then everyone will want to. All right. So here's the deal. I, I'm in Manitoba, central Canada, Winnipeg, murder capital of Canada. Uh, all the stores are closed except for essential services. Two thirds of Canadians are off work. The prime minister gave an official statement. He said, go home and stay home. That was his order to all Canadians. Go home and stay home. Two thirds of Canadians out of work. The Canadian economy is already completely tanked. Even though we haven't had that many infections or deaths yet, the economy is fucked. Uh, I am actually essential services. So I'm one of the uh, small number of Canadians who still has a job, which I was happy about. But then Trudeau or whatever said, hey, we're going to give $2,000 a month to every Canadian off work because of coronavirus, which is fantastic. I mean, thank God for socialist democracies and the fact that, you know, we actually have that. It's already been passed, whatever. But then I'm thinking, are you shitting me? So I'm going to work 42 hours a week getting coronavirus every day, essential services, and everybody else is sitting at home getting two grand a month for free. And I got to go to work and get sick, and they all get two grand a month. They get to sit home and watch Netflix and smoke two grand a month of pot. Fuck. But anyways, uh, you know, not that many deaths here yet, but we have good social services. We have free health care. We have cold temperatures. We have a low population density. We have lots of space. And even our economy is fucking tanked. And you guys are going to have to tell me if I'm roboting or whatever. But... Uh, This shows that it's not the lethality of the virus that's a big deal. And again, we ran the numbers on this on the server many times, and we were getting numbers like 700 million deaths. That's what we're getting, running these numbers on the server. You know, 700 million deaths. I mean, I don't care if you cut that by one-seventh, you know, to 100 million. If you piled that many human corpses in front of you, it would shock your mind. So a lot of motherfuckers are going to die. And when I say motherfuckers, I apologize because these are people's sons and daughters and mothers and fathers. The, the, the death toll from this is beyond our ability to fathom, and that's with a low mortality rate. And it could mutate. But even forget about the deaths. The economy is tanked. The stock market is tanked. Two-thirds of Canadians are out of work. How is it going to affect Mexicans and Indians and Chinese if it's fucking... Two-thirds of Canadians are out of work when we got space and sanitation and hospitals. I mean, this is a nightmare. I think human civilization is on its knees. And reports are saying 18 months at minimum till shit's back to normal. But there's no guarantee we're going back to normal. This is the same thing I said with the Iran World War III scare at the beginning of the year. We have now fallen off a cliff, but we've fallen off a cliff in the dark. We know we're falling. We know we're going to hit the ground. We know it's not going to feel good. But because it's nighttime and it's dark, we can't see how far we're falling. We don't know. Are we falling 10 feet, 100 feet, 1,000 feet, 10,000 feet? We do not know. Now, the problem is when China was hit by corona, its economy tanked. That's a big deal. Now, when Canada is hit by corona, its economy tanks. That's a big deal. When Italy is hit by Corona, its economy tanks. That's a big deal. But the problem is these aren't just a series of big deals. The whole human ecosystem is interconnected. So when China tanks, no Chinese people have money to buy shit. That means all the shit they were buying from Canada, all the tourism, all the trade, that's gone. Then Canada can't buy anything. They can't trade with New Zealand. You see what I'm saying? It all, it's not one plus one plus one. It's one times two times four times, you see what I'm saying? It's exponential. 
So how many lethal shocks can the human ecosystem of finances and withstand? Less than this. Less than this. I think so. I wanted to, could I add a point? So I think there's a few advantages to the coronavirus. I know that's like, that might sound a little bit strange, but it's making people really think about what's important in life um, and returning them to, uh, I would say, a natural state. I think what we can do moving forward, rather than worrying about uh, what's going to happen and uh, potentialities, uh, we should try to prepare ourselves. So if you don't know how to fish, you should try to download some videos off YouTube and uh, learn how to fish. If you don't know how to hunt, if you don't know how to sustain yourself from the land, uh, you should learn immediately. So I, I thank you, Case, and we may do an open thing after, but what we were doing tonight was a round table where each person gets their turn. We went from top to bottom, everyone got the turn. It's actually my turn now. We could continue with an open discussion. We'll get into that. And like you said, survivalism and that's really important. And so we're going to do a survivalism and a preparedness event soon. But for this round table, I think we're going to finish it up because it's already been a long event. So I am going to get the last word here. So what I'm saying is we have uh, a crisis on our hands. I'm going to give you some practical advice. If you have not yet, or even if you have, if you have any ability whatsoever, do go to the store and do stockpile, okay? Do get the canned food that you can, the bottled water that you can. I know you can't get hand sanitizer. I know you can't get face masks or latex gloves, but if you could, you should. So get all the supplies you can. You, know, you want to emphasize canned foods, freeze-dried foods, dry rice, dried beans, whatever stuff that has a long shelf life, doesn't require refrigeration, doesn't require water, doesn't require cooking. That's why canned food is the best because it has a long shelf life. You don't need to add water. You don't need to add heat. So even if your tap didn't have water and your electricity didn't work, you could still eat canned food and it's nutritious and it's actually quite delicious by survival standards. Pretty healthy too. So canned food is a good buy. If you don't have a year's worth of canned food, you don't have too much, right? You can't have too much if you don't have a, more than a year's worth because it has a year's shelf life. You do want water in 18-liter Culligan jugs, right? You don't want little bottles of water. That's no good. That doesn't last long enough. And you don't want to depend on tap water because it could be contaminated or shut off. So you want what you want is those 18-liter water cooler jugs. You want as many of those filled up as you can. And don't tell me you don't have space for them. You can put them anywhere. It's not a big deal. You want these. Fill them with water. Now, while well, you can, while well, the water is clean and free, because water is gold, more valuable than gold. Now, you want canned food. You want bottled water. Yes, you do need weapons. You do need ammunition. Now, why am I telling you about survival shit? Because right now there's a horde of fucking locusts bigger than multiple states ravaging two different continents. Okay? This is happening in Arabia and in Africa. There's going to be hundreds of millions of starvation deaths just because of these locust swarms, the biggest in living memory alone. Combine that with a global pandemic shutting down travel and trade and in interfering with every industry and agriculture. You multiply unprecedented locust swarms by un unprecedented global panic, and you have unprecedented global food shortage. Okay, And also panic buying means empty grocery store shelves. You're already seeing that. We established that in this podcast. If you don't have food now and you only have a few days or a few weeks worth and you have money, go get more. Okay, Get more now before you have to fight for it. Go get more now. If you're in the round table, I want you to have food and shit before the riots. Okay, because again, I'm not being a panic monger here. We have a global stock market collapse combined with an unprecedented locust swarm, combined with a global pandemic plague, combined with global anthropogenic climate change. So there's a lot of pressures and stresses on society right now. And again, I've been a prepper for years, so I have years worth of supplies and I have for years. But I've been sounding this alarm for a long time and people made fun of me and mocked me for a long time and said, oh my God, you stupid idiot for having food. Now you all see this, it does make sense, but it's still not as late of an hour as it will be, right? You could now, now if you go to the grocery store, you're waiting in line. You didn't used to have to wait in line. But after that, it's going to be guys with guns, right? There's going to be soldiers outside your security guard with M16s just to make sure you stay orderly. So I don't want to say too much more, 
and I wish it was in this way, but yes, they will use this to push forward quarantines, uh, fucking curfews, perhaps mandatory vaccinations, maybe microchipping, maybe FEMA camps, uh, a lot of things that they will take advantage of because remember, never let a good crisis go to waste, problem, reaction, solution, uh, the new world order just hit a home run, like it or not. And because this is a conspiracy theory server, I think that's a strong note to end the roundtable section on. But we don't pay for recording space. So now let's open it up to uh, open discussion. And if anyone wants to just go back and forth, uh, why not? One thing I have to add before I got to drop out is uh, on the note of filling up water and getting jugs, if you can't find water at your grocery store, which it should be available, usually it's pretty cheap, 99 cents for a gallon, you can actually, I put a link in the coronavirus channel for the, at least the United States uh, to find a spring and essentially you can take your own jugs and go fill water up for free. You may need to boil it, but there's a place that you can get it. And with that, I will need to drop out for now. Have a good night, everybody. Bye, Thank you. I love you, Sir Shadag. Please smoke Later, a cigar dude. for me. Dude, you got me wanting a cigar, by the way. Oh, yeah. I smoke cigars. I don't smoke too much weed, but <laughs> catch you guys. I actually I have a really funny story from the shutdown because it, uh, my state shut down on my birthday. So, like, I was exposed to the bar and that was dashed. It was horrible. My dad got me a bunch of alcohol and brought it to my house. Beautiful. Oh, dude, hook it up. <laughs> so I got a bar in my trunk right now, essentially. It's wonderful. Actually, you know, we can edit this uh, either way, but I think we might as well conclude the episode now because we did do the roundtable. It was a long event. So I'm just going to wrap it up. Uh, thank you, everybody, for participating. This is the new format for pretty much all roundtable events where we just go through top to bottom. Everyone gets a turn. That way it's all fair. It's all equal. Everyone gets the same platform. I think it works really, really well and matches the server, and I love it. Uh, so thank you all for being part of this one. We've done a whole series of COVID-19 events. Find them in RT Recorded on the YouTube channel. Again, Roundtable Discord server, just Google Roundtable Discord. Just go to Conspiracy Theory or Politics on Discord. We're on literally every social media roundtable. Uh, you can see it all on RT Media and the roundtablediscord.com. So please jump to Roundtable 1 or Roundtable 2, and we'll have free discussion, and we'll talk more tomorrow. And we're going to have liquor. at least two podcasts tomorrow.